सुप्रभात ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ योर आलमा मैटर आई फिजा जुल्फिकार योर होस्ट फॉर दिस आफ्टरनून वुड लाइक टू एक्सटेंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू यू ऑल at the 10th reunion of the class of 2013 this is a very momentous occasion as i am pleased to inform you that we have recently celebrated 64 years of the institute foundation i would now like to request professor kantesh balani dean of resources and alumni to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais I now humbly request Mr. Abhay Jain and Mr. Sushant Singh, our batch representatives, to please be seated on the dais. I would now like to request Professor S. Ganesh, Director, IIT Kanpur, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. I now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lamp lighting which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Shubham karoti kalyanam आरोग्यम धन संपद शत्रुबुद्धि विनाशय दीप ज्योति नमोस्तुते एट द कमेंसमेंट ऑफ एनी ऑस्पिशियस ओकेजन ज्योति हैज बीन ऑब्जर्वड द लाइटनिंग ऑफ लैंप सिंबलाइजेस अबंडेंस प्रॉस्पेरिटी एंड नॉलेज डिस्पेलिंग डार्कनेस एंड इग्नोरेंस thank you everyone reunion is not about counting the number of years rather it's about reliving and cherishing memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a shishi of iit kanpur <coughs> despite the few years that have passed i'm sure nothing has changed you still look as fresh as daisies yes, yes. So why don't we begin today by reliving our old days and becoming rowdy students once again? Yes. I request everyone to clap after me with three times and shout ten as loud as you can. Ten. Some more energy, guys. Better now. So let me take you to a short trip down memory lane. Ten years ago, more than 600 young boys and 60 girls from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comfort of their homes, all the way to a city called Kanpur, to be the part of this prestigious institute, IIT Kanpur. Gangs of Vasipur was a blockbuster. Irfan Khan, Nawazuddin Siddiqui and Leonardo DiCaprio were the famous actors. Karina and Deepika were ruling many young hearts. Chai 5 rupees ki thi? 3. Choti gold 3.5 ki? Badi gold 5 ki? Blender Sprite ka khamba 700 ka. Empty ki chai was always special. and to go to the places nearby here are they were very good hukka antarang rave 3 rave 3 and the new addition g square rave moti rave moti g square g square adda point famous jagrans were let's hear from you guys maggu bole to स्टूडियस चापू बोले तो टॉपर लस्सू बोले तो क्लासिक फ्लट इंट्रैक्शन बिटवीन सीनियर्स एंड जूनियर्स इन्वॉल्व खोलो सेशन जिसमें हम पहले नाम बताते थे फिर हॉल क्रमांक 
फिर शाखा और आखिर में हवा हवा बोले तो ए आई आर ए आई आर बोले तो ऑल इंडिया रैंकिंग दिस खोलो सेशन वॉज फॉलोड बाय मुस्की पूछो प्रोसेस एंड फाइनली जी बी एम क्रिकेट मैच वुड ब्रिंग क्रिकेट लवर्स टूगेदर इन अ टीवी रूम धोनी एंड सचिन तेंदुलकर बैटिंग ब्रॉड चेयर्स इन द रूम वेर एज क्रिकेट डाउन दे विकेट डाउन वुड ब्रिंग आवर्स ऑफ मॉर्निंग एंड ड्रिंकिंग लैंड गेमिंग लाइक एज ऑफ एम्पायर्स काउंटर स्ट्राइक्स वो मेजर अट्रैक्शन एंड हाउ वी कैन फर्गेट दिस हॉल वन की बारात दैट वॉज एक्साइटिंग मिश्रा जी इस बारात स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम हॉल वन वॉज एक्साइटिंग गार्ड्स एंड कैंपस रेसिडेंट्स वॉचिंग बारात वॉज मैसमराइजिंग राहुल रेसिडेंट ऑफ हॉल वन गेटिंग रेडी बाई गर्ल्स इन जी एच हॉस्टल वॉज कैंटिलेटिंग and in this digital age pandit ji asking the bride and groom to change their status from single to marriage was surprising and at the top of it pandit ji asking and requesting baratis to make his video to post his instagram post and tagging bride and groom was alarming 10 years of marriage let's check the happiness index our bride rahul gupta and uh, shubham mishra here no <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch them in the next reunion then <laughs> ladies and gentlemen this was the digital batch to see transformation in digital world as instagram and whatsapp were launched the very first social networking platform dc++ of iitk was another big add on a studious batch to go for an industrial tour to lucknow nainital amora and goa goa industry visit Jamshedpur. <laughs> I am sure you all remember the TA course by Professor Brijnesh, where you all scored zero. zero. <laughs> An energetic batch to see India winning the World Cup. Remember that saga of famous tuck tuck tuck. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most friendly batch, as their company would inspire. Special guest to attend the lecture. Can anyone guess that legend? It was none other than the clever crow who gave hundred percent attendance in the uh, Professor Neil Canton lecture. Yes. Yes, the crow. <laughs> A spiritual batch to celebrate all the festival with great pomp and show. including the balmiki jayanti utsav at nankari <laughs> and last but not the least a blessed batch because 600 ladko mein sirf 8 ladke hi kabil nikle why maybe know the reason eight girls choose their life partners here <laughs> i can't personally share your recollections of iit kanpur but we talked with a few of your classmates to get a try to get a closer look at it who's <clears throat> i would request those who are present here kindly acknowledge by raising their hands john dis <laughs> aditya yes rakhi <laughs> sbmc <laughs> puppy papa papa belu rohan kumar this is all i have from the treasure of memories of the class of 2013 i hope i got my facts right yes on this beautiful day let's all remember to laugh share fond memories and make make new memories that we can talk about in our next reunion we are so pleased that we have gathered here today in person something we do not want to take it for granted anymore now without taking much of your time i would now requ request professor s ganesh director iit kanpur to please address the gathering so uh warm welcome to all of you those who could make it uh you know this is something that we started recently you know 
reunion after 10 years of graduation is not something that, that, that existed before, but we thought that it's important that we reconnect in the, in the shortest you know, possible time frame. Therefore, uh, we could be in touch with you, and also you could be in touch with us uh, more than what we have been doing. I'm sure some of you would have attended my classes. I don't know. Is anyone from BSB or elective or core course? Doesn't matter. Yeah, <clears throat> because this, you know, 13. If I really look back, you know, I know many of the students, right? You know, in that in that batch, even uh, I taught even uh, core courses. Anyway, so what the 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 idea is that um, you know, often when we talk about the institute to uh, alumni who have graduated 20 years back, 30 years back. Uh, there are a lot of updates that we normally provide because they have been away from the system or in touch with the institute. So therefore, there are a lot more for them to learn as to what has happened. Uh, but you guys have graduated about you know, 10 years back. Uh, I'm sure you still carry a lot of memory, uh, including uh, the benches that you sat and what is written at the backside of the bench and things like that is still a fresh memory. But still, 10 years is, is a long period in, in any institute, especially an institute that is growing. Um, so when you visited around the campus, you probably would have seen, if you have not visited in between, you would have seen many new buildings. Yes or no? Can you raise your hand? Yes. So the campus look different or same? Same, okay, good. Looks better or looks looks better? That's quite good to know. Like how the library around that place, how does it look now? Same? Library is very different. <laughs> okay, good. So there is a lot of you know changes that happened and uh, for good. And of course the institute is growing. So uh, what I would not do is not a lecture of boring you with the you know, topic, but I thought that I would give some inputs or updates on the institute as to what has changed you know, in the last one decade or so. Therefore, you would be able to appreciate and, and you know, sort of you know, carry along with you when you go back to you know, uh, wherever you're working. So anyway, so this is the history. Uh, you know, many of us remember IIT Kanpur for you know, the, the facilities it has, you know, it has something that is very pioneering when it comes to uh, the computer center or the first IBM 1620 and things like that. This is very, very old, but what you see is that, you know, you can see at the, on the right hand uh, lower that these facilities have only increased over the time. So we have some of the high-end computing resources, including supercomputers and so on. So that's something that really is a, is a signature of IIT Kanpur. And, and the other signature is, of course, the campus being green. I'm sure many of you would have noted that with you know, every year passing by the campus, of course, we have new buildings and others coming up. But you can also appreciate that the campus has remained green. You, know? you have more trees coming in. Uh, though the building's you know, number has increased. That is something that is uh, very, very, uh, the campus is very, very uh, you know, mindful of that it should remain green. And of course, you know, the institute has grown. Uh, you can see now it's about 580 faculty. Probably when you are here, it may be about 400 plus. You know? um, we have added uh, in the last six years alone, close to 200 faculty members, right? So we have the UG students, 5,000. Now it's about 14 to 1,500 per batch. That's the intake. And the PG students actually is more than 4,000. It's so 4,700 something. You know, Total student is about 9,500 plus right now we have on campus. So we have a large number of postdocs. And of course, you all of you are being part of this alumni base, which is about 43,000. You know, it's really a strong alumni based for the Institute and you are our ambassadors. We value all of you a lot for your contributions, you know, in whichever field you have chosen to be there. So some of the new initiatives are shown here. Uh, majority of the departments you probably are aware of, but we have added what is called as sustainable, sustainable energy engineering is a new department. 
and the design was a program now with the full fledged department it's going to even start an undergraduate program so it's a department of design so we have cognitive science uh, department which offers masters and phd and then we have a new department called uh, space planetary and astronomical sciences in engineering so it is also abbreviated as space so these are some of the new initiatives uh, that took place in the last uh, four or five years <clears throat> The other uh, interesting aspect of the academics is that, so the institute has started what is called as the e-masters program. This is one year master's program specifically for working professional who would like to upskill uh, their uh, you know, uh, skill sets, especially in, you know, in industry relevant areas. So I can show about 14 such programs are there. Uh, these are tailored to the industry professional depending on what is the need of the industry? Some of them are you know, based on the industry need that we have framed, and it's one of the popular programs in the last two years you know, we have launched, and uh, we probably have about <clears throat> 300 plus uh, you know, working professionals who have enrolled for this program. So it's really doing quite well. Uh, we hope that we could add more courses based on the need. So this is something that we thought is very important, uh, especially for those who have been you know, in a given profession who can upskill their skill sets. Uh, this is not something new. Well, I'm, I'm sure all of you are aware of the flexibility that IIT Kanpur offers in terms of minor, you know, double major, dual degree. So I would not really give any um, update on that because your batch itself has seen all this flexibility that was brought in. So what is important is that, you know, the institute has grown uh, both in terms of number of students and also faculty. You can see that, uh, you know, you know, over the years, how many, you know, faculty have joined, you know, you can see that 579 is substantial number. We are hiring uh, more faculty, especially because, you know, we are starting new programs, new academic departments and so on. So that really requires faculty in diverse discipline. That's something that uh, we are uh, very mindful of. And, uh, you know, faculty have always done well and including the latest one that I'm showing here, um, yeah, so here, uh, two of the faculty members have been awarded Infosys Prize this year. So this is one of those very prestigious, you know, uh, award uh, recognition that is given to uh, people across the globe. It's not only they consider uh, faculty who are working in India, but even those who are abroad. So in that way, it's very, very competitive, you know, recognition. So that really shows that how good the faculty are doing. So there are other examples, which includes for example, uh, the fellowship to <clears throat> uh, what is called as uh, the Emerging Nations, you know, Third World Academy of Science is a different name now, but that's what it is. But uh, Professor Avinash Agarwal is elected as a fellow. That is, you know, growing list. And of course, uh, Professor Agarwal, Manindra Agarwal, is inducted as a foreign fellow in the US National Academy of Science. Again, this is a significant achievement. These are other, you know, awards and recognitions. Uh, which talks about you know how good they have been doing. So we can that you know sort of you know the tradition of IIT Kanpur continues when it comes to excel in research. So that's that's what it is. Research and innovation. Um, you know again uh, you know when you know most often when you are an undergraduate student, you really do not appreciate the ecosystem. But now I say a uh, little more about it. Uh, you know, uh, the ecosystem of IIT Kanpur is extremely good. You know, if you, if you really, if you have followed the, what is called as national, the NARF ranking, IIT Kanpur is ranked number one in innovation. So it, it, it's really the thriving ecosystem for incubation innovation activity. Uh, that is something that would be introduced to you later, I guess, in this session as to how good our incubator is doing. So we have uh, multiple <clears throat> centers around. Of course, we have this departments and then we have the interdisciplinary academic programs and then you have multiple research centers which really work on thematic areas. I would say that the cyber security center, the center for cyber security is one of those uh, think tanks for the country which takes up even projects that are of national importance. And then nanoscience center and many other centers really you know, focused on you know, thematic research. And of course we have facilities, but this ecosystem really help in the incubator. So we have, 
an incubator, which is run as a Section 8 company. It is an independent entity, but you know, fully governed by IIT Kanpur. So we have close to 170 startup companies, and as many have graduated. Some of them are really doing exceedingly well. Um, that is something that you know, something that you may wish to know when uh, a dedicated presentation is made. And we also have what is called as a techno park, which is a research park where industries come and set up their R&D labs. You know, there there are. You know, I'll give a few examples. One of the companies really spending close to 100 crores here on campus to set up their R&D facility because they find, uh, you know, some of the IPRs and uh, platforms that, that are developed here could be so relevant to them and they don't find it elsewhere. So that's the reason that they are setting it up here. So this is what I explained. So although the engineering, the ranking is number four, but if you really look at the uh, ranking in innovation, you know, the Institute is in a, in a very strong position, and that's because of, you know, all your students, you know, how well you have done in terms of research, and some of you have really <clears throat> translated your ideas to the startups and so on. So these are some of the examples. Um, uh, you know, this national blockchain for e-governance, I'm sure some of you would have known about the CP Grams portal, this is monitored by the Prime Minister of India. There is a portal where you can lodge any complaint. I mean, it, it, in any language that you can, you know, the Indian languages. So this platform was developed here. And this is such a robust AI-based uh, platform, which can sort the, you know, the complaints based on the context, not necessarily query, and, you know, refer to the, the relevant departments, you know, and follow up action. So this is something that was developed here at IIT Kanpur, and for this, the government has given a kind of a recognition, a prize also, as to because this handles, you know, millions of hits every day, you know, so and it is able to really, you know, perform beyond the expectation. And uh, there's also there are touch sensitive watches for in the blind and visually impaired. This has been commercialized now. There's a company that you know took this IPR and they are going to launch this. And we have other such, you know, uh, you know, inventions that have really gone into the market. This also one which is called as Boo Pariksha Soil Testing Device, is IoT-based device for testing the soil. This is of great importance to the farmers. And of course, I'm sure you all are aware about how bad the air quality is. But that, you know, <clears throat> the index was prepared at IIT Kanpur. We have. Uh, facilities that are installed in different parts of the country that is being monitored from IIT Kanpur. So this pretty much this national air quality index is maintained by IIT Kanpur. So these are some of the examples as to how the institute has been helping. And these are some of the IPRs and tech transfer. I mentioned about <clears throat> this uh, watch that is already you know uh, licensed, and we have few other that are listed, there, including, for example, a yeah, device. Uh, an ELISA based device that for you know for for the bilirubin uh, content mainly for jaundice and other such kind of ailment so you know it covers wide spectrum <clears throat> so again it's an interesting thing we have crossed more than 1000 iprs um, filing patents and then 400 have been granted and you know this is an incredible figure i can tell you that 14% of the iprs are commercialized is is an incredible figure because if you look at global average, it's three to four percent, right? You know, it's it's that that really talks about again uh, how good the students are doing in their research project or pro you know the research staff doing. So this is just a brief about this uh, incubation and ecosystem. So as I said, uh, it's a somewhat outdated. It's much higher than this what is shown here. And then if you really look at the Cumulative turnover portfolio, it's more than one, 210 crores, right? And you know, this is what is called as the first uh, foundation for innovation research uh, in science and technology. This is an incubator, uh, which really takes care of the incubation uh, activities of the institute. And if you just to give about a few examples is, you know, Endu Air is a company that is started by one of our faculty in the aerospace engineering along with his students. Half grid is again, you know, a student initiative. Two PhD students started this, and this is one really going a big way. I mean, the Shell has really funded a lot in that startup. Uh, they have their company in Noida, our out outreach center, 
and this is is considered to be one of those companies who really you know become a unicorn and they, because of the potential that they developed with the battery technology and this is i'm sure all of you are aware of one of the investors in this company is alia bhat right so she has funded a lot in that this company really collects the flower from all the temple you know temple waste and convert that into many different products right uh, not only that they have a r&d setup here in iid kanpur where they have developed what is called as a vegan leather which they they call is fleather which has the quality like leather but it is based out of flower right so that's what it is <coughs> so you can look at uh, you can relate to some of them because they're all your seniors some of them are uh, they are really you know featured in many many uh, awards or recognition that you can see here uh, this is you know forbes 30 130 asia right and uh, this noka robotics now it's a different name uh, they were originally a startup that is looking at robots for cleaning the solar panels but but during the covid uh, when there was a lot of uh, you know challenges in having ventilator uh, so this company along with iit kanpur and many other alumni got into this you know uh, uh, a mission mode project to develop ventilators so in about 10 months from concept to a product that is in the market it happened so this is one of the top 3 you know company that sell invasive ventilator in the country now and they are exporting and and their their ventilators are as good as imported model and but the price is about 40% of what you get for you know you have to pay for an imported so that way this is one of those company that has done exceedingly well and not only that they are coming up with what is called as a ventilator for pediatric care you know normally the ventilators are meant for everyone adult but then it becomes a challenge if if a kid is requiring that kind of assistive device so they are coming up with a model that would specifically for the kids that's something remarkable what they are thinking of likewise you have this uh, this also is something that this full company received an award and you can see that you know everywhere you have large number of you know people and this is about uh, global unicorn index you can see that iid kanpur is number 2 in terms of you know the potential so that really shows the potential and also the achievement of you know your community the students who go on to uh, translate their idea into products so this is the ventilator by the way that developed by this company and uh, there is a book also about the ventilator as to how it, during the complete lockdown how a company which was involved in robotics could develop a product that is so successful and and not only the product is successful the book also is pretty successful it is one of those you know highly selling book uh, in the amazon portal uh, that's something that really talks about how one could innovate with all the constraints despite the constraint if you can put your minds together and you have proper mentorship certainly you can translate your ideas that are commercially successful right so these are is something that technology was developed at iid kanpur now that is being licensed to this company so they would do all the pilot uh, you know uh, initiatives here once that they are able to confirm that it works well they'll for you know large scale uh, manufacturing they'll take it to their company but this is one of the setup that's coming up this close to 100 crore investment from this particular company so we are going to have a ground breaking ceremony next month because there's they are building a huge facility here <clears throat> so the other uh, important such partnership is with a company called carkinos healthcare is again a company that is uh, really supported by both tatas and reliance okay they have funded this company so this is uh, again a company which has a huge uh, backbone of diagnosis and ai based data science you know and there's this setup is along with uh, the one of the cancer centers in lucknow is uttar pradesh government and iid kanpur and these three companies is mainly it's going to do a free diagnosis for you know people who are at risk for cancer or who are diagnosed with certain form of cancer to you know do a clinical subtyping and it's a genomic screen so you can even look at at risk individual who may develop the cancer later so it and we are going to use the genomic information to you know come up with what is called as a predictive medicine and also therapy so that's the 
backend you know research that will be done at iit kanpur completely you know computational based on the genomic data but then this is of great uh, benefit to the you know the, the state of uttar pradesh so that's that's something that we are doing it along with the government of uttar pradesh so uh, this is photograph is uh, from uh, day for yesterday we have launched a school of sustainability kotak school of sustainability uh, this is a new initiative uh, from the institute where we are putting together uh, the, the department of sustainable energy engineering and also a couple of other centers under one umbrella which is the kotak school of sustainability to uh, really you know champion uh, a new initiative on sustainability because this is something that is not just technology it has to have a policy it has to have the involvement of the ngos the government and the community at large otherwise you'll not be able to really achieve whatever goals you set or the government sets and that's where the kotak mahindra bank was really keen on partnership with us they have funded as they have really given uh, significant funding for this that's the reason why we have named the school as kotak school of sustainability this was launched by the minister of education uh, on 14th day for yesterday <clears throat> uh there are a number of centers uh, these are seeded by the alumni with their uh, you know vision as well as funding and support guidance everything and one of them is uh, for example the shivani uh, center for nurture and reintegration of hindi and other indian language this is for the students who enter our program with uh, limited english knowledge so they find it difficult to begin with how would you integrate with the academic rigor or demand of the institute so this is is something that is expected to provide them what is called a soft landing that is one aspect so as part of this activity many of this you know subject uh, you know domain specific uh, uh, you know the reference materials are also being translated in different languages therefore they can learn easily and of course beyond beyond, beyond the technical thing that also looks at uh, the languages is one way to promote the indian languages so that is also a part of this center uh, this was funded by uh, mr muktesh pant an alum from irican four of course uh, it is named after his mother who is a, is a famous hindi literary figure shivani and we have another center which is chandrakanta kesavan center for energy policy and climate solution this is more on policy research and is funded by mr sudhakar keshavan um, of course in memory of his mother again it is part of the sustainable um, school of sustainability it does a lot more in terms of policy research so we have a number of visiting faculty and think tank which works along the line so these are the other infrastructure that were you know created with alumni support uh, this is i mean if you i don't know whether it is scheduled they are going there so if you have time you should go there this is ranjit singh roji shiksha kendra this is mainly to uh, train people who are in the rural area you know with 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 the skill set therefore they can live on their own right if you go there you really find it extremely um, inspiring uh, this is another for the chemical engineering unit jit bindra unit operations lab again funded by jit bindra and this is by dr ranjit singh uh, uh, an alum and uh, this is something that we initiated recently is called a jaipur non invasive brain simulation lab it's part of cognitive science and also you have uh, you know you furnished uh, refurnished the reading room in the library if you have time you can go and look at it that is done by uh, wife of uh, mr jaipur who passed away is a computer science engineering you know masters uh, student who was you know successfully uh we're running a company now he passed away his wife in his memory has really pledged a significant sum on therefore we could start this initiatives so, yeah. <clears throat> so some you know uh, information on the international collaboration so we have uh, you know this list is not uh, complete we have uh joint degree programs with leading universities across the globe when i say joint degree this the students get uh, you know into this admission into this program so you would mostly these are phd programs so they will have two supervisors one from iit the other one from your partner university so they get degree awarded by both the universities so we have it 
with one of the Taiwanese university, National Chiu Tang University. And then you have New York University, you have La Trobe, you have it Melbourne, and so on. So this is, you know, we have more than close to about 70 students currently doing their PhD in this kind of partnership universities. And uh, recently the Senate has approved even masters. For masters, you can have a joint degree like that, right? So that's uh, something that's coming up quite well in terms of you know, internationalization. And uh, these are some photographs to show you know, our engagement with the foreign universities. So this is something that uh, you must have seen, the infrastructure growth. Uh, and, 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 and perhaps, you know, if you have to compare the building that were there when you were here as a student and compare it with now, it's probably doubled, you know, the size both in terms of the building area as well as the number of students and faculty. You know, that's what we see the growth in, in about a decade. These are some of the new buildings. This is the largest building now on campus, Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex. So you have engineering science building one, two, and three. And then we have the core lab also got extended and we have added other infrastructures, which includes, for example, faculty apartments, the Center for Engineering and Medicine. All these are actual photographs. All of resident 14, and we are going to build two more hostels, 15 and 16, right? Uh, research complex. This is a techno park where I said that companies come and put their shop here. And then this is, this is another coming up next to the faculty building is called as faculty building annex C. These are some of these initiatives. So we have blocks that are added to existing hostels. These are uh, for the girls hostel, we are adding blocks um, to you know, take care of the need of increased strength, right? So this is something about alumni engagement. So one of the initiatives that happened in the last three years is setting up a dedicated unit of the institute called IIT Kanpur Development Foundation. So this is a Section 8 company of IIT Kanpur. So it's a professional uh, entity that really you know, tries to engage with alumni better because earlier it used to be part of the institute. It was finding it difficult to meet the expectations. So now we have the IIT Kanpur Development Foundation. Mr. Kapil Kaul here uh, is the chief executive officer. So the entire alumni reunions, you know, is handled by this wing along with the Dean of uh, Resources and Alumni's office. You know, so that way, you know, you can see that the outreach activities have really increased. Uh, of course, the board has some of the alumni network. In addition to, you know, having the alumni interaction, this office also helps in fundraising. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's indeed remarkable in the last few years. If you really look at, in terms of what we could rise in the last five years, you can see that, you know, uh, you know we are, coming close to 20, 200 crores, you know, 182 crores that, that we are able to receive in our bank, you know, that we are not talking about what is the pledge that is made, we are talking about the receipts, right? Uh, anyway, so that's, that's shown on the right side. <clears throat> so these are our major donors in the recent years, uh, um, which includes, for example, just last week, uh, the pledge by uh, Mr. Ashish Karandikar, uh, 95 batch, which includes um, the chair professorship and student fellowship and so on. So you can see that how uh, engaging the alumni were in or in, in supporting the activities of the institute. And in the last one year, ever since the COVID died down, so we have really uh, increased our uh, alumni reunions on campus. And you can see that, uh, you know, in the recent years, how many reunions and happened and all these photographs in the last one year or so. Uh, and there are many that are lined up, of course, uh, next week, the week after, and then in January and so on. And uh, these are some of the glimpses of our engagement with alumni uh, outside the country. So it sits, for example, in Sydney, in, 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 in the US and so on. So whenever our team visits, we really uh, set up such kind of meeting, therefore we can update them as to what new developments that are happening on campus. <clears throat> so this is a uh, recent one, this year's 40th reunion, uh, held on 24th and 26th, right? Class of 81, that's what you see here. And 
what i'm going to end with is something about a new mega initiative another school which is gangwal school of medical science and technology which is coming up with you know very ambitious project one of course is a hospital on campus is going to be a 500 bed hospital with nine different disciplines super speciality hospital and we also are going to have uh, 10 different dedicated centers focused on different research areas you can see that is all fusion of engineering and medicine whether it is telemedicine cardiovascular pulmonary disease ea in healthcare and so on so the idea is that you have a medical school which would have clinical discipline wherein faculty from engineering science and humanities can be part of it and likewise the clinical uh, you know uh, faculty who are physicians could be faculty in other departments and really look at the health care uh, needs from engineering perspective and come up with solution that could be of very unique to this country uh, or even in global sense you know you could make a difference in terms of your innovation and 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 research activities so this is coming up close to you i'm sure you all know the shivli gate on the other side of the campus so you are uh, this is a vacant land so this this is about 40 acres land that is now given to the medical um, school and this is being built now right now if you have time you can go and see um, that is being worked out so one of the major donor for this school is uh, mr rakesh gangwal he is a co-founder of indigo airlines so he has pledged a significant amount that's why this school is named after him as gangwal school but you have several other you know donors who contributed significantly and we call them as founding donors because not only they have pledged money but they are involved in every step as to how the school should become and you know in in terms of what is expected uh, and of course we have uh, co-founders so uh, this is really you know is something that a unique initiative because this school is built with donations we are not taking money from any government source so this is going to be an independent entity within the institute uh, which comes up as a unique model without taking much support from the government so there are several you know flagship projects in the in the center of excellence r and d centers but i'm talking about one such flagship project this is called as hridayantra uh, named but basically this is to develop what is called as artificial heart you know this is technical name is left ventricular assist device basically it's a small device that is put into your lower chamber of your heart when the heart is giving up its function so normally if you don't do that the patient would die right but if you put the device then really it's a remarkable you know change to that individual because he or she could live another 30 40 years you know because the device makes such a huge difference but the challenge the challenge currently is that you know affordability such device that exist it costs close to 1 and 1/2 crores so you know if you really look at a large number of you know patients in india especially kids in their you know before even teenage they die because they could not afford such you know a device uh so this is what we put together as a very unique model uh, where in the students and faculty and research fellows are involved and we also you know really uh, put together a a team of doctors who are really you know top notch you know cardiac surgeons uh, including dr devish shetty from narayan hridaya they are advising us on this and what you can tell you is that in last one one and a half years <clears throat> from prototype so we have uh, a mini version which we are going to put it in an animal for pre clinical trial right so if that works out next would be clinical trial so the idea is to bring down the cost of this device to something around 10 lakhs and make it affordable therefore many lives can be saved so this is one such initiative but there are many other that that we have lined up as something that you can make a difference in terms of how you know engineering solutions can make a huge difference in med tech you know uh, you know sector because you know if you if you really see in indian context all the machines that are there in the hospital right including disposables most of them come from abroad and the challenge is that first they are very expensive because that's how the market plays because you're reporting 
Second, in any challenge like what you have seen in COVID or any war situation, there's going to be a complete you know, blockade of any such transfer. So you'll not get, you know, I mean, as simple as the mask, I'm sure all of us remember that. I mean, it was a scarcity even to get masks, right? You know, there were no uh, producers here, but then, you know, we are able to do it. That's a different thing, but that's where it is. Unless you have the know-how technology and your supply chain within the country, so you would not be able to face such challenges. So this is one such attempt as to what difference we can make in an institute like IIT, where you have all disciplines, and if you bring in medicine, this part of it, you can make a huge difference to the society. That's what it is. And uh, I'm sure many of you could contribute in one or the other ways. Um, you know, as I said, this is built over completely donations. We have various models for that. And we are building what is called as the PG doctor's residence block is already built already, right? This is coming up. This is over 90 studio apartment for the doctors to stay because we are going to offer what you call as a super specialty degree, DM and MCH. We have already done the Bhumi Pujan for the hospital. Um, that's coming up big way. And then we have uh, recently uh, you know, signed an MOU with multiple institutions. One is, of course, the University of Melbourne, which is one of the top ranked medical schools in the world. Uh, it's the top 20, if I'm not wrong. So we have had discussions with them. So many of the academic programs, we are going to have a tie-up with them. So the idea is, you know, I, I'm sure all of you are aware about the flexibility of academics at IIT Kanpur. So you have a bachelor's, you can do a double major in any other, right? Any other department, or you can do a master's in any other department. So can we have such program? For example, you're still in a BTEC, you are interested in engineering and medicine. Can you spend another three years become an MD with your computer science or electrical or mechanical or materials, whatever, or bioengineering. And you're going to be a very different clinician as compared to any other clinician because you understand the spectrum from science to engineering and medicine, so you can make huge difference. So that's our ultimate goal as to create what you call as next generation clinicians who are trained in a very different way than a typical standalone universities in India that offer MBBS program. So that is primarily for serving patients as a patient care, but our aim is to create physicians or engineering, um, engi uh, okay, doctors trained in engineering, what you call us, and who have a different you know, uh, approach towards that. So that's, that's what it is. Uh, of course, you know, the, the objectives and ambitions are pretty good, but everything comes with a challenge. I'll just share uh, some of the challenges, um, just because we believe uh, the alumni are part of our family. So the family, we need to understand what challenges you face. Uh, so, and, and, and of course, you know, these are the things that really you have to look at it. One, of course, overall faculty count, like we are looking at in 2025, we would be 650, we would have crossed 10,000, you know, student strength, uh, you know, that is, that's important because, you know, when you really talk about research, you need to have research students. So that's the aim. And that, of course, requires you have to really increase this, you know, your infrastructure, you know, more labs, more building, more equipment, and so on. And, of course, you need to have residential, you know, uh, for the, you know, there's faculty or for the students that is there. And, of course, this is already done. So this is not a, we have a, we are looking at school of entrepreneurship, school of data science. This is something that we are thinking that we should start because these are emerging areas. So we are really looking at, you know, possibilities there. And of course, the Gangwal School is going on. So the challenge is that you know any such expansions requires funding. You know, so but the government now doesn't give a lot of grants. So pretty much it, what they give is a salary fellowship, and that's it, right? So basically, whatever the new building that you have seen how come from, you know, the institute takes loan, okay, from banks, the Canada banks give the loan, and then we build this, and then we have to repay the loan in, in about 10 years, and that whatever you repay, that is not, cannot be paid from the grant that you get from ministry. So this you have to earn, how do you earn? You earn from the tuition fee, or from the tech transfer that we do, 
or the R&D projects and, and so on. So endowment, donations, this is how you do. So that's the challenge. So if you want to really grow, you have to generate a lot more money. And of course, this is where it is, that funding and so on. So this is something that we are very mindful of. We are you know, reaching out to stakeholders and see how we can do. So that's, that's what it is. So there are a number of you know, uh, needs. We also, uh, we also want to support students in terms of their fellowship, awards, travel grants, like you know, you have done a BTP project, you want to go and present in a conference, international conference, can we support you? So these, these are some of these activities. Of course, you know, this is how alumni can really contribute, you know, in one way or the other. And, and of course, there are many other, you know, engagements. Some of you, if you are doing exceedingly well in your organization, if you want to contribute, and if there is a program here, you would like to come and teach, you know, few lectures or mentor, the startup uh, students and so on. So there are several opportunity here, visiting faculty, adjunct faculty, professor of faculties. You don't need to have a PhD, but you have a professional domain knowledge that is good enough for you to come and contribute. And of course, there are ranking and other things where you can really give your opinion as to how the institute is. That also is sort of helps in the perception because that is, yes, you know that perception is an important uh, component of ranking parameters and this has a weightage. So that is another thing that you can really help in spreading uh, about the institute. Therefore, people feel that uh, the institute is as good as it's being told, right? Thank you very much for your time. I thought you can. Yeah. <clears throat> so if, if you have any questions, query or suggestions, please feel free. Uh, Anything? Yeah, please. Yeah. The admissions on that would be through the, how would the admission would look like? Yeah, so right now we are not looking at any undergraduate program there, right? So, okay. Right? So it, as I told you, it is called a super speciality. Uh, so what we are looking at is masters and, so in, 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 in medical program, uh, so, you have an MBBS, which is about five years in Indian context. Then they have the MD, which is about three years. And post MD, they do go for what is called a DM or MCH, right? That's about another three years. So what we are not looking at is the MBBS. We are looking at the DM and MCH. This is the top end degree that we can offer. That is the for our phase one. Not necessarily right now. Because see, there are challenges uh, in medical education because for every program, there is a need for number of beds that should be there in the teaching hospital, okay? So if you are taught, I'm, I'm starting an MBBS program, then there's a, we should have a general hospital, right? Because this is a more undergraduate program. But what we are starting is a super specialty hospital where you have you know, gastroenterology or gastro gastric surgery and so on. This is mainly in a hospital that would treat patients that cannot be treated by other hospitals around. So that's what's called a tertiary you know, hospital. So they refer here the patient because they cannot treat. It's not a simple challenge, you know, it's much complicated. So that is what we are setting up because that is where you can make a difference here because that kind of a hospital doesn't exist in Kanpur, right? So you have to either go to Delhi, Mumbai, and so on. So in about, you know, 100, 150 kilometers radius, there are no such hospital. So that is how I arrived at the disciplines as well. What you know, uh, care that is required because that is, it doesn't exist. So in, in, in challenging cases, by the time they take the patient, you know, it is too late, you know. So that's, that's where the aim is. So if you're offering that kind of a service, so you can only offer this DM and MCH, right? So that's where we are aiming at. But our long-term goal is to develop this school into an unique school, which, you know, brings in engineering in the medical curriculum. So right now we cannot do that because the, you know, unlike, you know, the degrees that we offer in IIT, I don't know how many of you are aware, we can decide what degree we offer and what kind of a blending program we can give because you have full complete autonomy in doing that. But we cannot do that for medical or medicine because the government doesn't allow it. So you have to go to what is called as, there's a commission, right? So that the body that you have to go and they will not allow. So they give you a template. You have to stick to that template. So, so the, the, 
the, the Indian system is not yet ready for that kind of a radical challenge. But I'm sure it will change. Um, one of the ways by which you can change is by promoting that kind of research and showing that what you can, you can impact you can make. So right now we are looking at the super speciality because we need people who are trained in a different mindset. And second, we want to really do uh, research that are in the interface of medicine and research, you know, sorry, engineering. So that you can show what potential you have by having a medical school within you know, a campus which has science, engineering, humanities together. So for example, we are trying to pitch in what is called as, as uh, sports medicine, right? So, uh, you know, all of you would have known, how many of you know Muthaya Murali Dharan? Right? Everybody knows. So he was given a tag. What is that tag? Yes. And then he was, the tag was removed. You know why? How? Right. Where was, who, who cleared it? He went to Australia. So there are centers which look, look at biomechanics and say that, you know, there is a developmental problem. It is not that he's doing like that. You know, then they came up with this, what the elbow, what should be the minimum, maximum, all these things, you know. So it's a, that's one I'm talking about. Even otherwise, you know, if you want to be an athlete and you want to be successful and you want to sustain your professional life, you know, how do you really run? How do you really maintain your body? Is something which is beyond medicine, right? It's more about mechanics and your wear and tear and, you know, you know, your, you know. So th that's a very different breed of medicine, which, which requires engineering principle and then all these things, simulations and other things. So that's something that, you know, these are, I'm, what I'm saying is that's the potential that you can, you know, create a different kind of, you know, discipline here because you develop a school on campus. So that's the idea, you know, that's what it is. They would be selected by the normal mechanism which already exists in India, or there would be different exams? Uh, no, right now, uh, if you, I mean, strictly as on today, if you have to offer that kind of a program uh, within the, the government norms, then you have to go back to the same Neat, you know, like JE or GATE, who you have for the engineering, uh, undergraduate and masters. So for the medicine, they have this NEAT. Even for PG, you have to undergo that. So we have to select from them only right now. But we never know. So we are talking about two years from now, we'll have the hospital ready, right? The R&D centers are already operational. So academic programs, maybe about three, four, five years, we'll start. It could change, right? Because we are, we have to really tell the government that you have to offer flexibility if you really want to make a difference in, in, in medical program. You know? That is something that is our responsibility as well. So that we will do. But we'll see then what would be the you know, guidelines then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi. So thank you. And I think uh, great to learn about all these uh, uh, initiatives and the ways to learn, uh, ways to engage with them. Um, like a question specific to our batch in a way is that we like not too many 10 year union you get to see. Um, and um, uh, there are some things, I mean, having been part of some of the reunions in 25th, 35th, there are some constraints there and some uh, benefits there. And similarly in 10 year reunion, there are some benefits that we can bring as our batch is, you know, some of the things is that um, we are all in a growing phase of our careers, you know, um, still connected with the uh, existing trends and uh, systems that are changing. Uh, but of course, uh, there's a uh, financial aspect is, you know, like not everyone has that freedom yet. Um, so, you know, according to you, like, um, what is the exhaustive ways of engaging as a 10 year batch? Because we also, one of the, according to me, one of the good things that we also bring is the the ability to be in current context, exactly. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, which maybe to 25 year uh, reunion people might not be able to see, right? So if you could just elaborate a little more on how we could contribute. Sure, better. yeah. So one could contribute in many ways, right? You know, certainly uh, when we invite uh, this 10 year reunion, certainly we are not looking at that you will be able to financially contribute. You know, that's, that's certainly not the case. We know that, you know. But it is the other way around. We want to be in touch with you, right? 
so if you really look at any uh, big industry you look at their products so what is our product all of you right we are very proud of you are our products so you are like we have trained you so we love you a lot you know so we really are proud of what you have done and you have been in your profession for 10 years right so it's also our kind of a, a desire to engage and inform you as to what we are doing as an institution because you are a stakeholder right so you can support us in many ways so some of you may be involved even in placement for example in your company you may be coming here to hire students right or you may not be directly involved in that but your company may be hiring you may have some official that you know you can say look id kanpur is a great place you should i should go and hire people there right so even if you are starting a new <clears throat> discipline within your company and you are looking for some certain trained manpower by listening to this talk you know that what are the new program that you are starting you can say that okay you go and look at it for example i give you cognitive science is going to be a major major player in in the industry in years to come okay cognitive science is not about just understanding how the brain works it is more about understanding you know how as a group also you function so if you really want to take some decision right this science helps you to come up with a model as to how as a group you have to take decision what is the risk takers like how do you really take decisions you know i mean there are many other aspects to that you know so and what i am saying is that you know this gives you an window of opportunity to know what's happening in the institute and of course as i said the the simplest thing that you can do is that when you when anyone does any survey for the ranking you know if you are passionate if you really like your alma mater you know you can you know you know you can simply go and rate the institute you can because you are not associated with the institute now so you can rank institutes based on your perception right so that also is a contribution and you telling others you are seniors in your company wherever it is about the institute that's again is a way of acknowledging you know how good your training has been how good the institute has been and as and when you have come to your stage where you think that you can contribute in one or the other way i mean that's you're most welcome so it is it is certainly you know we know that you know uh, you'll not be able to do anything now but that's not our aim it's just to engage you tell you as to how good or what changes you know happened in the institute because we consider all the alums as our family members right so this is one occasion where we can interact and share and tell our achievements right so you'll be able to appreciate that maybe i'll request kapil to give a little more brief uh, if that would be of help yeah mm -hmm. <coughs> so thank you professor ganesh that that was really good so so the other ways are and as you rightly pointed out what you have today is the context of what is happening in the world today mentoring students is is something that you can do so well and you can give them you they will relate to you you're not someone who graduated in 1970 or 1980 today's gen z may not understand what they're talking about they have tremendous life experience but they may relate to you so much more so guiding these students because you had your journey your own experiences uh, uh, i always said that all of us make learn from our mistakes but the real smart one learn from other people's mistakes so you can talk to them about your journey your mistakes how you have grown in life so so that is going to be tremendously helpful to them so that is one way and 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 of course we could also find ways of uh, if the institute can help you because you're in your own professional journeys uh, if you think that in terms of your own skills and ideas we we can uh, we can help you in any way we would be very happy to do that and and work on those ideas as well but more importantly i would say professor ganesh covered it all we were not expecting anything big from you we want you to be engaged with the institute connected and and see what's happening here and how we are growing and if you have any ideas you can so, so we're very clearly talking about even giving back we're saying uh, one is we of course 
My job is fundraising, so I will look at raising resources from all of you and every alumna. I won't let go of an opportunity, but uh, we're not talking just financial contributions. Time, time is very valuable. And, and as you're young, your time is even more valuable because you, you, many of you would have recently got married, would have young children. So you, you need to give them time as well. So if in that you, any one of you is able to pull out any time and contribute, it, it makes uh, a lot of difference. Bhavesh is here. He, I'm not sure whether he's got it yet or not. He worked with us last year on uh, the strategic plan for the Institute in terms of putting together uh, uh, the, the vision for the next 10 years. Yeah. See, that is of tremendous help. So we are looking at these inputs. So we, there are a lot of things that we do internally and we may not have expertise of everything that happens outside. So, so you can contribute your time towards that. That is priceless. So, so that helps. Thank you. Yeah. Kantesh, like to add. <laughs> See, going forward, you may, you know, for example, I'm talking about placement as, you know, one possibility. I'm not saying that you should bring your company, hire somebody, but if some of you become volunteers and train the students here as to how you should face the interview, how you should communicate, how you should present yourself, how you can make your case stronger, because you have been in the system for you know many, if you are successful. So if you can give the students, you know, some you know kind of a pep talk, it's going to make a huge difference to them, right? So that you can do because they're going to look up to you because they look at, you know, you're just you know graduated 10 years back. There's not a huge uh, what do you call uh, generational gap. You know, you can talk their language, they can talk your language it becomes much easier for them to communicate. But if I bring somebody, you know, who graduated 40 years back, they will be a little scared talking to them, right? So, but then your input would be of great, you know, uh, inspiration to them because you can relate and say, look, forget about it. Your CPA is not that great. That's not so important. But how do you make yourself, you know, present your case? You know, if you say that, if you give, give an example and, you know, really tell them, motivate, it makes a difference. That's again giving back. Right? What is institute? Nothing. The building, if you, if you remove all these people, the building doesn't make institute. It is you. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's our expectation. If you, anyone asks, what is our expectation? That's what, whatever you think you can do, please do. Right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much, sir, for coming and delivering such an engaging and enlightening session. I would now request Professor Balani, Dean of Resources and Alumni, to please come forward and address the gathering. Yes, Professor Ganesh has made my job very easy. So first of all, a very good afternoon to everyone and welcome back to the campus. This is your 10th reunion, so we are very happy and delighted. And Professor Ganesh mentioned this is the second time I think we are hosting 10th year union. You know? So it's very nice to see that young blood back on campus. Also, it was mentioned that we have now been ranked number one in innovation. And I really urge you to come forward and also help us engage more actively. If you're involved with, with any company, any firm, I think you can see there are multiple avenues on which we can engage in terms of either mentoring or even helping us you know, or taking utilizing uh, whatever we are developing at IIT Kanpur. So please come forward and engage more actively. We had multiple reunions. Yes, I think each batch comes and they give something back. And as we already mentioned that we also would urge you to come uh, mentor people, give your time. Also, I think direct and guide uh, students so that they can get better placements and how to live the life further. So there we had, I think, a, a array of uh, multiple reunions. Last year, we had hosted 15 reunions after a period of COVID. And this year, we are planning nine. And so it's nice uh, that you are here. Uh, this is the second one. In terms of initiatives, there are multiple initiatives. So starting from early 2000, so PBCC, this conference room, and that block was being donated by class of 1965. Then Park 67, outreach building, uh, faculty lounge, squash court, yoga aerobics hall, and recently waterfront, which is donated by batch of 1979 and 95. And we also have a gym upgradation coming up by class of 1970. 
And there are multiple other uh, developments. So you also already heard in the morning about Opportunity School. There is also Cyber Security Hub, C3I Hub, Ranjit Singh Rodi Shiksha Kendra. Then we have Shivani Center for assisting uh, students who are coming from non-English speaking background. So how can we allow them or facilitate them so that they feel comfortable at IIT Kanpur. And very recently we also have launched this Mehta Family Center for Engineering and Medicine last month. And again recently we also inaugurated or basically uh, founded this uh, uh, School of Sustainability, Kotak School of Sustainability a few days back. There are multiple ways in which you can engage. Uh, I can just highlight some of them. So there are some mentorship programs. So in this case, you can uh, basically come connect to the students and talk about your experience. That will also help them to take uh, steps in terms of deciding what they want, what their career should be, and how to even cope up life at, life at IIT Kanpur or maybe which courses to take. We also have started Alma Connect. That is another way you can engage. So that is a platform where there will be a talk by the person and also there can be personal topics. And recently we have had a few engagements uh, this year. We also are starting with IIT Converge, again to initiate some interaction between donors and beneficiaries. Earlier when we donate something, I mean it was more or less, oh the thing will get uh, done. And now we are also initiating more uh, channels in which we can engage in terms of providing the utilization report, the progress report, even connecting you know, one on one through this uh, online video conferencing. We also keep engaging students in uh, during orientation. So we also tell them what they are, what potential they hold and how can they contribute once they come back, once they become alumni. And that is also helping us in some sense. And there are a couple of current challenges. So if you are thinking what I can contribute later on, there are multiple engagements which you can actually help us with. We have multiple campaigns, so we have really funding requirements going up because of number of faculty members, number of students, they are going up. As we are also growing, taking a leap, we would like that we try to make it up. So if you have any connects, even your firm would, would like to come back and give something back to Alma Mater, please you know, try that avenue as well. And again, as uh, Professor Ganesh also mentioned that we have now government giving funding only for routine things, not for infrastructure anymore. So to take a loan, if you want to construct a hall, we need to take a loan and pay it from our internal income. That becomes taxing because that money could have gone to support students to go and attend conferences, support in their research or even their other activities. So those things are also I think becoming a little bit uh, taxing on the uh, institute. And again, we still require multi much financial support. Also some other engagements also can be taken forward. And we require this funding opportunities so are available for you. We require it definitely for infrastructure community welfare, research innovation, student faculty, and main, I think bottleneck if I to say it is mainly for the student housing currently. And as new departments also are coming up, and new initiatives have been taken, taken up like Gangwal School of Medical Science and Technology, uh, even a School of Sustainability, we really require some funds to be diverted or to be, you know, concerted, concerted effort should be made along to get some support there. And there are multiple avenues also for students to allow them to get travel for the conferences. And we also started recently a Sayog uh, scholarship. So sometimes it is very hard for a person to even come to IIT Kanpur. They got an admission, but they do not have enough money to even take care of the initial expenses. So that also I think becomes very meaningful. Even if in some way we can support them, it will really you know, help uh, in some sense. And I, uh, one more thing, uh, one more opportunity which I was just thinking is uh, we also are starting with something called as a, maybe I'll come to it a little later. Uh, I think then I think I'll highlight that part. It is called as uh, ITK uh, Contribute, which I'll convey in a short while. This also was already mentioned that Gangwal School is now opening up multiple centers of excellences, and that is a super specialty hospital. One, I think, highlight of this is as well that we are also outreaching to society. We also want to serve the society. So out of those 500 beds, 250 beds are for, for those patients who are probably not able to you know, uh, support or pay the normal price. So it's for government schemes so they can really get the treatment done at a very, very low cost. So this is, I think, the outlook of IIT Kanpur to also support what is surrounding it, you know, society as such. And again, funding opportunities, maybe we can take a look at it a little later, which was already highlighted earlier. But yeah, there are avenues available in which your firm or you can donate maybe now or later whenever it, the time comes. And again, there are multiple avenues here also, uh, either in terms of super specialty hospital, taking 
like certain uh, sections all together or academic or housing blocks or centers of excellence. So that can also be explored if you are interested. There are multiple other de new departments like Department of Sustainable Energy Engineering, Department of Cognitive Sciences, uh, Space Science and Astronomy, which is the name is now changed to SPSE, Department of Design, which are also available in case someone wants to support. And in terms of student initiatives, uh, one definite thing is the housing. So as we mentioned, current uh, student strength is around 9,500, whereas we have capacity for only 7,500. All 14 has come up, which is a capacity of around 750, but it still does not support because we are expecting to grow further. So we again require some help along those lines. And if possible, I will really urge that if you can come together and you know, uh, help us with some scholarships, financial aids, merit awards, or travel grants, or any other development programs, in which, whichever manner you can. And this is the way in which you can contribute very, very significantly and strongly. So we're not asking for a big amount at all. It's like you can start very, very small, like SIP. Start something consistently, pay a smaller amount, but on a monthly basis. That will help us remain connected. And maybe when you come for a 25 years reunion, you'll realize that you have made such a big impact, which people, even when they come for 25th year reunion, they're not able to make. So I'll urge you to start early, but continuously over a period of next, say, 10, 15 years, it will really be very, very helpful. And with this, I think you can really make a big dent you know, in whatever you are trying to contribute from a batch. There are multiple faculty initiatives as well. So again, there are multiple avenues for faculty fellowships or new faculty fellowships or chairs. But again, I will not get into that right now because as the faculty strength is increasing, it is now 579. This is a little older data, but we're trying to grow very fast. And there are also multiple avenues for CSR partnerships. They also become eligible for you know, exemption, income tax exemption. And Mr. Rajat is al already here. He, you can, in case someone is interested to you know, provide some support through CSR from your firm, uh, please you know, come forward, let us know. We will facilitate that as well. So these are tax benefits, but again, these also can be taken care of you know, once we engage more actively. Uh, but definitely, I would like you to, th I mean, we would like to thank definitely the team of IIT Kanpur Development Foundation who are behind the screen and help you and make this a very smooth, smooth experience. So I'll, a round of applause actually for them. <laughs> I'll request if the team can stand if they are here. IITK Development Foundation team, if they can stand, maybe they're at the back or outside. So thanks to them, they are here. A round of applause for them again. <laughs> also the team from Dora. So overall, we are around 35 people uh, in this particular team, and they ensure that the experience is very smooth. So really thanks to them. Also, a very sincere thanks to the batch coordinators, Sushant, Randhir, and Kavya, and also to who are sitting here. So typically, I write a few lines. I think this is 10th year union. So I typically pen down a few lines for each batch, typically. So for you, I think you just started. It's your 10th year. So, Rasta Dur or Durgam, Har Kadam Tehra, Har Kadam Tehra, Navo Chal Pata Hai. Rasta Dur or Durgam, Har Kadam Tehra, Navo Chal Pata Hai. Girte Utse Thokar Lakti, Kabhi Malham Na Mil Pata Hai. Ek do se kaha bani hai khub ye daasta tumhari. Ek do se kaha bani hai khub ye daasta tumhari. Das ka dam to ay rahi, ye do muthiya milkari mil pata hai. So I think uh, I'll stop here. I'll be happy if you have any comments or you want to connect with us in some sense. I'll, otherwise, I'll leave the stage. Hmm? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir.